Hello everybody. Today's class is about classifying species diversity. So, what is species diversity? What do you exactly mean when you say species diversity? Now that's not exactly the topic that we are dealing with right now, are we? We are classifying what it is. So, let's go from the basics. Species. Let's go even smaller. Like cat and dog. You should know that the, these are two different species. And even in cat itself, there are lots. Like big cats, small cats, so can, that kind of things. I mean, lions is one species. Panthera leo, like that. And from tigers, it will be Panthera tigers. So there are different types of species. And when you go from your home, there are some plants over there, some cats, maybe some dogs, but some pets, other pets might be there. And there are of different species. And if you go to... Uh, forest you'll find different species over there so the diversity of an species depends upon where you find them and uh, you can say that the diversity different types of species in an area is different for different regions so for a uh, study point of view like a project that you do in your MSc or PhD and go on and so on and so on you have to uh, at times have to identify different species and you have to find out the species diversity itself and there are mainly three as you can say uh, types of species diversity let's go with the first one which is the alpha diversity and uh, according to Whitaker it is refers as a diversity within a particular area or an ecosystem what does that mean so no, there's something uh, never mind so if you take um, a place that you're really familiar with like New York if you are familiar with that or from uh, Trishur or uh, New Delhi or uh, you know Scandinavia maybe and these particular areas or cities or towns or villages have what you call um, some species that are inherent in those in that particular area and you just count all of them in the look at this the picture that is given so in the picture there is a giraffe there's a tiger a lion a zebra and an elephant and so on there are a few and there's a penguin it's a little bit small but I guess you can see it well enough and this is the consider this area as a or this particular name it as New York you can find everything in New York like that so all these things are there, all these organisms are there in that particular area and and this particular area's diversity is referred as the alpha diversity meaning for that particular area this is the uh, species diversity let's count the animals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 around 12, yeah, 12 species are there so the species diversity is 12 in this place and uh, if you are going for another area like um, and if only half the organisms are found, like six organisms, six species of organisms are only found, then the species diversity or the alpha diversity in particular of that area will be six. You get the idea. And it is most definitely, you can refer it as the species richness of that particular area. So if we know what is alpha diversity, and alpha, the numerical A, as you may refer it as. Now let's go for a different type of diversity. And since this is alpha, the next one should be beta. You know, like the alphabets. Anyway, so the beta diversity, uh, as Vitaka represents it, as counting the total number of species that are unique to each of the ecosystem being compared. So, what does that mean? It's just a, something I said. So, do you understand what that means? Let's go through it once, once more, a little bit slower. It represents counting the total number of species so the total number of species is needed and what is this pecu peculiarity that they are saying there that are unique to each ecosystem so and being compared so this study or the beta diversity is a comparison so the example beta diversity between the forest and the plains is nine in Trishul 
that is there are five species found in forest of Trishur and four species found in the plains so a particular area called Trishur have like nine species and five of them are in the forest which is unique and four of them are found in the plains which is unique to that area so in each between two different areas we can saying that uh, two areas as I said that uh, alpha diversity of the forest is five you can say it like that and the alpha diversity not exactly the alpha diversity but you get the idea of that particular area there is uniquely there are five and uniquely there are four in the plains and the beta diversity in total is the nine just go through it once more and uh, you will definitely understand through the picture that here so look at the picture there is A and B, two different areas. And in the A, there is a monkey, there is a lion cub and the two tigers. So the species diversity or the alpha diversity of that area can be said as three because there are only three different types of species. Four organisms, but only three types of species. And in B, a different area, we can see the earlier picture with the 12, I guess, one, two, three, four, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes, exactly 12. So, 12 organisms. More, uh, more particularly, 4, uh, I mean, 12 um, types of species. So, 3 in the A and 12 in B. So, the alpha diversity of A will be 3 and uh, for B, B is 12. Beta diversity. Uh, alpha diversity of B is 12. And in comparing A and B, we can uh, eliminate that uh, lion cub uh, and a lion in both of them and uh, the tigers in both of them. So the what is it? What do you can call it? The beta diversity is the comparison, the unique organisms. So you don't have to count uh, lion cub in A and lion cub and the lion in B as two different species. You count it up together. So, can you find out the answer? Please try. And we'll definitely go through this once again. And finally, the gamma diversity. It's really simple if you think about it, about the gamma diversity. Alpha, beta, gamma. There are three types of diversity. And from what Vitaker explained, gamma diversity as the measure of overall diversity within a large region. So, alpha is in an area beta is a comparison and gamma is the overall measure the entire region so it can be represented as gamma diversity equals alpha diversity plus beta diversity together they form the gamma diversity and there's not much more that's needed about gamma diversity so let's look at this one the hypothetical species a b to n uh, the woodland habitat uh, hedge grow habitat and the open field habitat so you can see there are some species present there in some areas in woodlands and some in head region and some in open field regions so let's see what is the alpha diversity of each alpha diversity in woodland habitat a b c d e f g h i and j which is 10 a to j that is 10 alphabets meaning uh, 10 uh, hypothetical species are there and the alpha diversity of woodland is 10 and similarly we can say head is only 7 alpha diversity count the excess and uh, in the open habitat it is 3 that much will be much easier for you to understand now this comes next comes the beta diversity so what is beta diversity a comparison of the unique species so there are 10 in uh, what do you call it woodland and uh, 7 in head grow and and you can see that almost yeah exactly five of them are present in both a uh, woodland and head grow they are not unique so what is the definition of beta diversity the unique species right in the comparison comparison of two regions and the unique species found there so avoid f to j since it is found in both regions and count the rest so a to e there are that is five and k and l that is two so what is the comparison that is the beta diversity between woodland and head grow you get seven that is of the entire thing there are seven uniquely present species 
uh, between woodland and head grove similarly if you check head grove and open you'll uh, you'll get about a uh, eight once more do your counting and you'll exactly find that that's a number it's not that difficult just subtract one from each and you'll get it six and two it's get eight and similarly woodland and open field and here we got nothing in common that means we can count the entire thing 10 from woodland and 3 from open so completely the, the beta diversity will be 13 and uh, what is the gamma diversity it is the entire thing right whole lot so there are about uh, a b c from till j it is 10 then k l m n that is 44 so there is 10 plus 4 species in the entire region and the overall species which is the 14 if you have any doubt just count all the uh, hypothetical species and uh, from a to n and you can see that in different regions woodland head grow and open habitat uh, these species are present or the entire species are special present and the total number meaning the hypothetical species number that is 14 and is the 14th alphabet thus we get the gamma diversity as 14 it's not that difficult just count the entire thing not uh, not the entire axis but the entire species number meaning all the hypothetical species a is 1 b is 2 like that till n you'll get 14 now now let's go for another picture and in this it is another exercise if you want to call it it's not that difficult oops yeah let's go back oh there you go anyway and it's not that difficult as you can see uh, in three regions and the alpha diversity of uh, oh you can if you can see it uh, that that part uh, as you can see uh, the lower right uh, we have about three green circle and one yellow box at the top we have one star one triangle red and one blue round and uh, yellow square and at the left region we have one red uh, triangle and two blue balls <laughs> oh, oh boy and uh, yeah forget. and one green box and in comparison we can say that uh, alpha diversity of each and the beta diversity of each and just go through this and you'll find out what it is just take down the picture if you want to or you don't have to just uh, look at this and try to find uh, what it represents and i guess that's the end of our class and if you got any doubts do write in the comments and uh, if you uh, do like and subscribe if you can it would help me out since I'm not really learning anything, earning anything from this, uh, it's more or less um, my attempt at forming a channel and uh, to spread all the knowledge that I can. So yeah, do your best and uh, stay safe during this quarantine time. All the best.